so now if we want to compare the different additive manufacturing processes so how the comparison can be made so we will mainly discussing about the four processes we will have studied sorry SLA stereolithography that is a liquid polymer system SLS selective laser sintering but discrete particle system that is molten metal system that is the fluid deposition modeling then solid sheet system we are having the elbow so these are the parameters using which you can compare the different processes first one is the material choice and phase transformation material choice means what are the materials we can use in a particular process and what is the kind of phase transformation is taking place in SLA there is a stereolithography we can mainly use only the photopolymers and the phase transformation is from liquid to solid in case of SLS we can use all kinds of materials we can use polymers, we can use ceramics, we can use metals so all the materials are possible the phase transformation is initially it is in the form of a powder because of the action of laser it is going to fuse and it is going to become partial liquid or fully liquid and then it is going to solidify in the discrete particle system if you want to talk about the binder jetting process as such there is no phase transformation during the manufacturing process because only binder you are dropping in the form of droplets onto the powder particles which is going to hold the powder particles together after the component is manufactured you are taking it out and you are doing the sintering thereby you are fusing the particles together and improving its strength so in FDM process that is the fuser deposition model modeling you can only mainly use the plastics and some polymer composite materials with carbon nanofibers and other things which can be used in even in SLS also or in LI, uh, LOM also so phase transformation is here you are initially having a filament and the filament is melted and then it is allowed to flow out of the nozzle and deposited and allowed to cool and again becomes solid in laminated sheet manufacturing there is virtually no phase transformation takes place whatever the initial raw material condition is there it will continue to remain in the same fashion there is no lot of temperature is also not involved next one is support creation and removal in SLA stereolithography you have to create support structures so the UV laser we are whatever you are using whenever the support structure is to be created its intensity will be reduced because of which the support structure is created will be having lower strength and we have to after the end of the process we have to remove the support structures by using appropriate tools and maybe we have to do some polishing or other activities to improve the surface finish in SLS again the same thing SLS is basically a discrete particle system theoretically speaking it doesn't require any support structures because the powder particles present below the given layer will act like a support structure so there is no question of having any support creation in almost all the cases and there is no question of having any removal of the support structure next is the FDM FDM definitely requires the creation of support structures and you have to remove it by use of multiple nozzles it is possible to use a separate separate material for supports which can be soluble in water or solvent or some low strength materials which can be very easily broken if you are using the support material made up of the same material as the workpiece then removal may be slightly difficult <coughs> so in lost laminated object manufacturing there is no question of having any support additional support materials which you have to create but removal of whatever supports are there or unwanted material is a tedious job porosity and strength SLA components we can only use the photopolymers so very little porosity is there the strength is also on the moderate side because of the choice of materials by doing the curing by of using UV light or low temperature we can slightly improve the strength in selective laser sintering we can use lot of materials so if you are using metals you can get very high strength 
but whatever component we are getting out straight away will not be having the required strength we have to do the post processing to reduce the pores and to increase the strength usually sintering process is carried out to improve the strength if you are talking about the binder jetting process the strength is very very low definitely we have to perform the sintering activity if we take the example of direct metal laser sintering then whatever component is created that itself will be having the significant amount of strength sintering may or may not be necessary in the fdm process the porosity is very minimal in the component what we are building the strength of the component is very good but the successive layers joining or layer adhesion is always going to be a problem in laminated object manufacturing since we are using only low strength materials like paper or polymer the strength is less porosity is almost negligible because the two layers are properly joined together next one is the energy source stereo lithography requires uv laser so handling the uv light and uv lasers are very important so lasers are required in selective laser sintering also we require lasers but their strength will be much higher as compared to the sla because in selective laser sintering we have to actually melt the polymers or we have to fuse together the metallic powders if we take the example of binder jetting process we only require the heat to ensure that the binder is forming droplets and it is getting deposited in fdm process the energy source required is electrical current which is going to melt the filament and it is allowing it to drop or deposit on the workpiece or on the platform in lom again we are using the laser to cut the polymer or to cut the paper so it sh should have some minimum amount of intensity to ensure that it is having the strength to cut the paper or polymer that is being used if you are using metallic sheets in lom the laser should be of significant strength to ensure that it is melting the metallic sheets and it is able to perform the process accurately or correctly the next one is the temperature effects so sla doesn't have much of a high temperature during its entire process it is only hardening the polymer so there is no question of having any warpage or other temperature stresses induced in the workpiece in sls if you are using laser to melt and diffuse the different particles definitely there is going to be temperature gradients created in the workpiece which may lead to stresses which may lead to adverse micro structures also so there are going to be lot of temperature effects in in the case of fdm we are actually melting the poly workpiece material and we are depositing it so there is a very large chance of thermal distortions or warpage of the workpiece as you are trying to create the component in lom process we are only cutting the material so the temperature effects are very very less in case of the lom process in, in some of the lom machines we are not even using a laser we are only using a very sharp cutting edge using which we are cutting the sheet of paper or we are cutting the polymer in the required fashion the last important and the interesting one is the creation of hollow structures for example you are having a cube and inside the cube you want to have a complete hollowness so there is no material over here so now which of the four processes we discussed here can produce the hollow cube if you take the example of the sla if you are trying to build from here you can build the bottom layer the next layer next layer then you can build the wall but when you are trying to build this particular surface it will not remain over here and it will simply fall down because it is only liquid it cannot support that particular layer properly so you may have to create some support structures over here now if i if we permit the support structures present over here but not completely solid here inside then whatever support structures you are creating that will remain you can create this layer and you can complete the cube from all the sides now the question is what happens to the liquid polymer which is present inside the cube over here that will continue to remain inside of the workpiece so the, we can say that the cube is not actually hollow it is filled with liquid polymer 
So if you want to create hollow structures, you should have some holes which are created in the workpiece through which you are draining out the polymer or the material, raw material. When the material is properly drained by using vacuum or by natural means, you have to close the hole so that you are going to get a real hollow component. Now if you go for the discrete particle system, again the same issues will come up. So here you are creating the layer, again layer, so inside you are having the powder. You can come up to this particular layer, inside you are having completely filled with powder. If you are trying to create this one, there is no issue, you can create this layer because the bottom powder layers are supporting the top layer. You can create the complete component here. But inside this hollow portion, what was required, you are having the loose powder. So again here, in case of discrete particle system also, you have to make some holes and you have to take out the powder from inside the component. Later on, you have to close that particular hole that you have created. Now in case of the FDM process, the same thing if we go, we can start from the bottom, we are trying to build the component up to here. Since we cannot straight away build this, we have to create some support structures to support this top surface. Then once you are trying to close this, what will be left inside is only hot air or simply air will be left inside. You can completely build the component inside there is no material available. So in FDM process only we can create these hollow structures. But one thing to remember since FDM process it is actually melting the raw material whatever air is present over there that will be of high temperature. When the component is going to cool down the volume of the air present inside is going to reduce and the pressure is going to drop inside. On the outside you are having higher pressure, atmospheric pressure. On the inside because the volume has reduced, the pressure will drop. So the surfaces will not remain perfectly vertical. It will be warped like that. It will be warped in one way or the other to compensate for the loss of volume of air which is present inside. So why the air will be hot? The air will be hot because the material also is hot. So the air inside also will be at a higher temperature. That is the only issue. Otherwise we can create a perfectly hollow components by using the FDM process. In LOM again the same issues are going to come. You are actually cross hatching the material present inside. But when you create this top layer the material is closed below that particular layer and it is not possible to take out the material without making holes on any one of the sides of the component. So without making the holes it is not possible to remove the material which is present inside the hollow portion. So these are some of the parameters using which we can compare the different processes. If you want to compare about the surface roughness which is achieved then SLA will give very good surface finish followed by SLS then followed by FDM then followed by we can say LOM process. This is a broad comparison of different additive manufacturing processes.